Alright guys, welcome to another video and this video is going to be about making custom exhaust manifolds for that engine because um, I had to move turbos to the side of that engine and in order to mount the turbos on the side of the engine I will need to make custom exhaust manifolds. Um, so I've already done the manifold for one side but I still have to make the manifold for the other side. Uh, but just to show you guys the design and um, what I've gone with. Um, now I have to apologize for my welding on this one because it looks extremely crappy. That's because I had the um, settings on the welder wrong. I had to grind the welds off again and then redo it. That's why it all ended ended up looking like this. Um, but I'll try to do a better job on this one. But yeah, anyways, explaining you guys the design. So I've tried to keep everything as small as possible. Um, that's because I was trying to um, get the turbos as close to the engine as possible because the wider I make the whole thing, like the wider the, the farther the turbos are from the engine, I would need to design a bigger frame to actually fit the turbos in the frame. Um, and a bigger frame obviously means more dead weight on the car and so that's why I've gone with extremely sharp bends on um, these pipes and also like there was almost no space left between the collector and the flange this was extremely difficult to weld but it should all work properly and it should flow hopefully much better than the stock manifolds because showing you guys some of the differences between the stock manifolds and these ones the tubes they've used um, in this header are actually extremely small they're only 35 millimeters and the size of the ports coming out of the engine is actually 40 millimeters so there's a big five millimeter drop right when the air um, exits from the port and goes into this manifold and also the um, size of the collector like the main collector where all the exhaust flows and then goes it comes out from here this is also 41 millimeters so it's actually fairly small for an engine with this much displacement uh, what I've done with my manifold is that I've gone with much larger tubes. So the inner diameter of these tubes is actually 41 millimeters, so it's just slightly larger than the exhaust ports. And it all goes into a 2 inch collector, so the collector gets even bigger. And then obviously the flanges are big enough anyways because there's a turbo flange here and then a wastegate flange. Uh, so the wastegate is going to connect here and the turbo is going to connect here. So getting to how I'm actually making these manifolds. So I started off with a sheet of metal, like it's better to get flanges if you can find flanges already made for your engine that's obviously the best option because it will save you a lot of work because but I couldn't find any um, flanges that were already made for this engine so I had to start off with this um, sheet metal this is seven millimeters thick seven millimeters is actually on the lower side seven millimeters is probably the bare minimum I can go without warping the metal or anything um, but I have tried seven millimeter before so I know it works but usually you should be going with uh, 10 millimeters or something thicker even the stock one is actually eight millimeters uh, the flanges on the stock manifold so what I did was to start off, I just put this manifold over this one and I marked the position for all the holes where I needed to drill my holes. And after drilling the holes, now I have the same uh, bolt pattern on this as the engine. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the center point of these two holes and then make bigger holes there so the holes actually line up with the exhaust runners coming out of the engine. And then for making the tube part of the manifold, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this tube for making the bent parts. I already have it marked, so I'm going to cut it from here and then from here. That's how I'm going to get my 90 degree bends. And then for the collector, I'm going to use this 2 inch uh, tube in the middle. So I started off by marking the exhaust manifold flange so I could actually drill bigger holes in it where the um, exhaust ports go. Uh, so for marking the holes, I just put an old exhaust manifold gasket over it and I just uh, marked the holes because that gives you a good indication of where the exhaust ports go. After that I just used a hole saw to actually drill the holes in the flange and once the holes were drilled I just put the flange back on the engine just to make sure that all the holes were lining up with all the exhaust ports. Now I was thinking of cutting this exhaust manifold flange in the same shape of the um, factory exhaust manifold flanges so into like four individual sections but doing it that way would have been more difficult and there would have also been a bigger chance of ending up with welding warps so like warping the um, flange when I was actually welding it. Um, that's why I just decided to leave it as one big rectangle. It's really easy to do it this way. After that I got to making the tube section of the manifold so I started off by cutting these um, two 90 degree parts from this um, bed tubing that I had. And then I placed all these different sections back in the flange and I tack welded them together for now. And next I had to make the two um, inner tubes, like the two poles that are left on the flange. There should be tubes going from there to the collector. For making these tubes I had to notch them first by um, cutting them at an angle on the chop saw. Um, notching is important whenever you're um, welding round tubes to other round tubes because um, in order to make them fit properly on the round tube you'll obviously need to notch them. Once they were notched I just put everything back in the flange and marked the length I needed to cut these tubes at. Um, just so I could make all the tubes the same length. After these tubes were cut to size, I just needed to do one more thing and that's to mark the place I need to cut the collector at because exhaust actually needs to flow through these tubes into the collector. So there actually needs to be a hole there on the collector. For making these holes, I just used a plasma cutter. Now a plasma cutter is definitely not the cleanest way to cut this. Ideally, you should be using um, a hole saw for this one too because it gives you a really clean cut. 
But since the plasma cutter is way quicker, that's the reason I went with that. Um, but make sure that if you plasma cut, make sure to clean the cut off later with a Dremel or something, just because you shouldn't be leaving the edge really rough because this is an exhaust manifold. If something um, breaks off in the manifold, it could go into the turbo and destroy the turbo as well. Once all that was done, it was time to weld all these tubes together. So I put them in the flange just so that they stay in their proper places. And then I just tack welded them and later I just removed them from the flange and completed the welds. For welding the tubes to the flange, I first bolted the flange onto another piece of metal. So I had to drill holes in another piece of metal and then um, bolt the flange to that. Um, this is really important because if I didn't do that, it was almost certain that the flange would have worked when I was welding it. And if I end up with a warped flange, obviously that wouldn't seal up against the engine properly and I would end up with an exhaust leak. So yeah, once the flange was bolted in place, I just welded everything together. So now I have most of the manifold welded and this time the welds did turn out a little better than the other manifold but they're still not the best looking welds. I think the reason is that this metal is a little too thin so when, while I was welding it um, this metal is so much thicker than this one so it's really difficult to like put so much heat into this one and not put too much heat into this one um, because if you put a bit of extra heat into this one the weld just blows right through um, so that's why it was really difficult to weld this. But now since all the welding is done next all I have to do is put this on the engine and then I have to figure out the placement for the turbos because um, there's already a turbo on one side so now all I have to do is copy the position of the turbo and place the turbo at exactly the same position on this side. For the wastegate flange and the turbo flange I just stole these parts from the um, previous setup that I had like when I had the turbos mounted at the back of the 55. After the flanges were cut I just um, bolted my half complete exhaust manifold to the engine for now. Um, this is so I could figure out the placement for the turbo, so I just hung the turbo in place using that um, contraption. And then I just measured the place of the turbo just to make sure that the turbo is um, at the right place where it needs to be. Once I had the position of the turbo figured, I just tack welded the turbo flange in place and then unbolted everything. After this I just marked where I needed to cut the collector to make an opening for the um, turbo flange. And then after that I just broke the flange off the manifold and um, actually made a hole there with the plasma cutter. So yeah, basically the same process as before, just making a hole there um, for the wastegate and also for the turbo flange. And then welding everything back together and that was pretty much everything. So after all that cutting and welding, this is what the final result looks like. Um, after that I've given it a spray with one of those exhaust manifold paints. I'm pretty sure the paint is going to burn off later anyways, but at least for now it's going to protect the... Uh, manifold from getting rusted or anything. So now that everything is done There's only one last thing left to do that is to put the manifold back on the engine and see if everything actually fits So now I have everything bolted on the engine and um, this is not the final time I bolted it on because I still need to change all the hardware like all the nuts bolts and gaskets the final time I put it on I'm gonna be using new gaskets and also um, New hardware to put everything back on just because for exhaust every time you replace it um, it's better to change the nuts because these are locking nuts. If you don't change them, there's a chance that they might come loose afterwards. But yeah, talking about how everything fits, it's an extremely good fit. Everything is really close to each other. It's a really cramped fit, but everything like has um, like its proper clearance. So there's not going to be anything touching each other. Um, the only thing is that I'll need to relocate these um, points for the, the wastegate. They're going to have to go over here. Um, so that's not a big deal. But um, also these um, spark plug wires, they're extremely close to the wastegate, so they're not touching, but um, I'll need some type of heat shield or something and also wrap these um, wires. Um, also looking at the other side. So yeah, pretty cramped fit. Everything is just crammed on the side of the engine, but yeah, everything does fit and everything should work properly. Um, talking about the downpipes, this is not the final downpipe by the way, this is just something I had on the E55 and I've just carried the same thing over for now. Um, but the final downpipes are going to be something similar to this, they're going to exit from the side. So there's going to be one pipe going from the wastegate and it's going to exit from the side, the other one is going to be from the turbo and um, a bigger pipe and that's also going to be exiting from the side. Um, so yeah, in terms of weight, this is going to pretty much weigh nothing at all um, because, well, the manifolds only weigh 3 kilograms, they're the same weight as the factory manifold, um, but the turbos only weigh 8 kilograms, like 8 kilograms each. Um, so they're going to be a big weight saving over the supercharger, which weighs um, 40 kilograms, and it also sits fairly high on the engine. Also talking about the oil, so I have clocked the turbos for now, um, so the oil uh, feed line is at the top and the oil drain line is at the bottom. So hopefully now um, everything with the oil should be extremely simple, all I need to do is there's an oil outlet on the engine over here, so I'll just add a T and there's going to be one line going to this turbo and one line going to the other turbo. 
for the oil drain i'm thinking i'll still need a scavenging pump because um, if you look at how wide these turbos are on the engine obviously when the car goes through corners oil isn't going to be draining down from these turbos to that oil pan it's going to be the opposite thing oil is going to be going up to the turbos um, whenever the car corners above 1g or something um, so yeah that's definitely not going to work out i'll definitely need a scavenging pump for these turbos um, just like i had in the e55 so that's something that worked with that car um, so i'm just going to carry the same scavenging pump over for these turbos for the air filters, um, this is the final place for the air filters. They're just going to be um, mounted on the turbos right over here, but there is going to be ducting around these um, air filters. Um, so they're going to suck, like there's going to be a duct right here actually on the side. Um, so it's going to uh, suck fresh air and it's going to go right into these air filters. So that's going to work really good in terms of um, airflow and everything. So that is going to be everything for this video. Um, just to tell you guys what's coming in the next few weeks. Um, so obviously now I've measured out the turbos and I know that they will fit in the frame. So everything is good for that. Um, but next I have to take the E55 apart from the rear and also measure out the differential. Um, that's just one last thing I have to make sure. And then once all that is measured out, I will start work on the frame and um, start building the new project from there. By the way, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you might want to watch the previous video I uploaded explaining the new project. Um, that's what I'm uh, making all this for, like placing the turbos on the side and um, getting rid of the supercharger later and also doing a whole lot of work on the induction side. So yeah, that's all going to be coming for later. For now, thanks for watching and hopefully see you guys in the next one.